Not Cool is a great film, but only if they change the definition of great to the worst. I was personally insulted by this movie, like actually straight up insulted on so many levels. And the fact this is not a free hour and a half long video on Shane Dawson's YouTube channel only worsens the blow. If you didn't know already, Shane Dawson is a YouTuber who specializes in screaming Epic pool party, motherfucker! and generally being quite loud. I honestly don't really know what he does. Vlogging, I guess. I suppose if that's your thing, that's cool. But does this man work on the big screen in a professionally made movie? Epic pool party! The answer to that question rhymes with mess. Wait, no, sorry, I meant to. When you have Amazon reviews for this movie headlining with Poop is funny, people! Wake up! You probably know exactly what kind of adventure we're in for here. If there's anything I absolutely hate, it's modern American high school comedies. They all have that poster with the white background, unpleasant juvenile humor, and the subtlety of Logic's song about suicide. Who can relate? Woo! I simply don't find them very funny. And without that aspect working for me, there is effectively nothing else to appreciate. So imagine the worst high school comedy you've ever seen, now multiply its terribleness by about 400, add an extra dash of obnoxious and a hatred for people who are worse off than you, and bazinga, we have not cool. I didn't exactly have high hopes for this movie when I sat down to watch it for the first time. YouTubers trying to break into film doesn't exactly have the best track record at the moment, but at the very least I was hoping for something coherent, inoffensive and traditional in terms of how the film is structured. But unfortunately, besides the offensive and thoughtless humour, alongside the expected beats a film like this has to hit. The plot is just kind of pointless nonsense based around the most unlikable and loathsome characters I've ever seen. Usually I'm exaggerating at least a little bit, but this time I actually mean it. These people are diabolical. There is not one redeeming aspect of this movie, unless you want to go as granular as The camera was in focus. You could see what was happening. Well, that actually looks like they're in a real car that's totally not a fake green screen. Man, that looks awful. Everyone knows that bad comedies are about six billion times worse than any other type of bad movie. Movies that don't know they're bad and aren't trying to be funny are always the most enjoyable, mostly because laughing at people's failure is unfortunately too satisfying to Resist. Ha! Look at them putting themselves out there and utterly tripping over their pathetic efforts. Loser! Loser! That's hilarious! You're gay! Well, I guess when I phrase it like that, it kind of just sounds harsh, but you know what I mean. There's nothing more sad than watching someone who's trying to be funny and failing miserably. It's just kind of embarrassing. Comedy is one of the hardest things to pull off in film, and too often than not, it just falls into gross-out humor or cheap pot shots of people who are disabled or different than the main character, to be edgy and offensive just for the sake of being edgy and offensive. Good examples of this kind of awful humor, aside from not cool, is The Love Guru, basically anything with Adam Sander in it, movie 43. You get the idea, this is the kind of level we're talking about. Not Cool feels like it was made simply because Shane Dawson had the opportunity to make a movie, as opposed to actually having a story he felt he needed to tell, people needed to see Not Cool. It was written as some guy's first project who I've not heard of before, and Shane Dawson, as well as starring, also handled directorial duties. Try saying that sentence three times over. Unfortunately, I think the concept of this movie at its very core is already so so flawed that even with one of the greatest living directors at the helm, this film would still be a mess. What are arguably two of the most important things a comedy needs to succeed? Well, actors who are funny usually helps. Some of the more talented comedic actors are able to embody so much personality and charm into the material, maybe even providing ad-libs when appropriate or suggesting their own ideas for the story or characters. It's just kind of something any good actor would do. The other important aspect is the comedic intent. So in other words, what is the point of your comedy other than wanting to make people laugh? Is it a satirical deconstruction of political or social issues? Is it absurdist nonsense where the only goal is to impress you with how ridiculous it can become? Is it a loving parody that makes fun of genre tropes? Is the comedy in place to provide levity and build likeable realistic characters in an otherwise dark and bleak scenario? Your options are kind of endless because humor is so innate to how we tell stories. In fact, high school or just school, college or university in general general is so ripe for telling comedic stories that I'm surprised we don't actually have better films in these settings. Aside from Ferris Bueller, School of Rock and some other obvious choices, more often than not it's a pretty stale context that most of the time falls completely flat. So what is not cool even about? Well the plot is described as being a group of modern day Pittsburgh teenagers spend their Thanksgiving break experiencing a mixture of love, friendship, partying and sex. 
Okay, so there's nothing really wrong with that. It's obviously a film about relationships over a story-driven plot. But it's when you actually dive into the listed bullet points here that everything, and I mean everything, falls apart. The film wastes no time in how quickly it wants to become unlikable and over the top. The opening shot literally starts on some girl's asshole and proceeds to hover around a crowded party using mobile phones to highlight how scummy people can be. This is a technique that never shows up again and I guess is just to be for a flashy opening shot. I guess I do like the fact that this is a 36 second long take. One is one of the most jerked off types of shot in film because they're just a cool concept and add a sense of momentum and flowing pace that can't really be achieved in any other way. I don't think what is actually shown in the shot is very interesting, but it is a decent way of establishing the space a party is taking place in, so I'll give it that. Who doesn't love Thanksgiving break? Me, Tori Gillespie. So this is one of the four main characters. She's introduced in a narration that only occurs at the beginning and end of the movie, a hallmark of lazily written screenplays. She throws around a lot of rude words, and she cements herself as an edgy, sarcastic teenager with a hell of a lot of attitude. In fact, when I was researching this film, I happened to find a comment that was comparing herself to this character. It said, Okay, so I'm so similar to Tori, like, really similar personalities, but I've just realised how fucking annoying she can be. I know she's nice and all, but oh god, she would get on my nerves after a while. I need to tone down that side of my personality. Now, if some anonymous 10-year-old YouTube commenter can notice how ridiculously annoying this character is, and you can only imagine how I felt sitting through this. There are four main characters that are all on the poster, and it kind of becomes a competition of who can be the most unlikable. I don't have a problem with a character who has an overblown, sarcastic personality, but when it's written like this, it becomes extremely predictable, one note, and tired in a very short amount of time. She gets <laughs> puked on, and there's a title card. Oh, no. Look at my side! Wanna switch lives? I'd rather eat my own shit. And I do! This is shit up in here! <laughs> Within a few seconds, they insult black people, homeless people, and blind people. That's gotta be some kind of record. Look, I don't think any subject should be off the table when trying to write comedy, but to me, there's nothing funny about pointing a finger at someone who is disabled or homeless, and that, in and of itself, sort of being the joke. It's kind of low and has no point or payoff or setup or any value apart from basically being shock humor. Like, did you really have to have the homeless guy eat his own poo? I like poo jokes as much as the next guy, but can you imagine how this would look on the script? Okay, so the homeless black guy says, I'd rather eat my own shit, and I do. This is shit up in here. Doesn't sound very nice, does it? <laughs> oh my god, will you shut up? Calm down, oh, we don't let judge. me take Just in this information. Oh my god, Jesus Christ, will you chill out? Shut up! For some reason I've noticed in a lot of American comedies, they like to have the characters constantly scream and just be loud and obnoxious and it too quickly becomes a crutch. In fact, the only time this kind of humor has ever really worked for me is in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and even then those are my least favorite parts in an otherwise hilarious and extremely well-written show. But god damn, finally we see the main man himself whose girlfriend freaks out and screams and shoves into people and we're only three minutes in, this is three minutes. It's such a consistent onslaught of over-the-top, in-your-face comedy that I had to keep pausing it just so I could process exactly what I was seeing. There's a really uncomfortable sex scene in a toilet and because the guy eating his poo was so funny the first time, he does it again. It ends with her breaking up with him through a glory hole. I'm sorry, Scott. It's over. Whoa, that is outrageous. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the third main character is this incredibly camp guy. Bye, gross, stupid fucking bitch! Oh my god, can you chill out with the screaming? It's like everyone's on cocaine or something. The final main character is this girl, who's Shane Dawson's sister. They use a record scratch, which is funny and original for a feature-length movie. Jamie. I spent the first act desperately trying to figure out what kind of tone this movie's going for. Are they trying to be a cartoon in real life? Is this family guy on the big screen? Is this supposed to be the most unrealistic depiction of real people ever put on a DVD? I can't figure out what actions have consequences and what don't. All of these actors are in their mid-twenties or look even older, and they're supposed to be in school or only just leaving, which is kind of ridiculous. But I guess it doesn't matter that much, but it is distracting. Hashtag ass ventures. So. Sounds kind of gay.
she's right. It does sound really gay because this guy is, is pretty gay. But his character's supposed to be this girl-hungry maniac. I guess this is kind of just down to bad casting. What the hell, Dad? You're closing the store? So the girl finds out that her dad's vinyl shop, yeah, is closing down and gets upset about it for some reason. I was going to tell you guys about that this weekend. They treat this scene as if we care about their dad's vinyl shop closing down. And he explains quite rationally why he's closing it and that monetarily he's fine. No, we're not broke. Truth is, the store's doing pretty well financially. So why do they get upset? What is going on? Why is this necessary? I'm going to let this next scene speak for itself. I'm not going to say a word. Plus, I'm totally fine spending the night in. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm going to fart. Oh, go ahead, honey. You know, it's going to be so loud. Oh, uh, come on, we've been married for 25 years. <laughs> There's another party scene where this time it's an Indian gentleman who's made a mockery out of. Let's all point and laugh at the fact that he's Indian. That's my grandmother! <gasps> Let her out, man! Let her out! Again with the constant, never-ending screaming! <laughs> funny, funny. I've only been roofied and fingered like twice tonight. Funny. It's Molly mixed with old people medicine. It's supposed to be totes, Cray. Well, anyone who would do that is totes retar. <gasps> the best thing to come out of this movie, without a shadow of a doubt, is the phrase Totes retar. Totes retar. Nothing about it really works. It sounds bad to say. You'd have to explain it to everyone you say it around. But I'm going to be using that one until the day I die because it is so gloriously bad. Totes retar in and of itself is totes retar. Who wrote this? I guess this guy wrote this. This this is the kind of guy who thinks totes retar is an, ex is an acceptable line of dialogue for a movie. The guy who hasn't figured out that he's gay yet awkwardly spills the girl's drink all over her, then takes her to the bathroom and sexually assaults her. He creepily stares at her and suddenly I feel like I'm watching Deliverance or something. It's genuinely pretty inappropriate. Give you an A plus with those titties. I mean, goddamn. Yeah. So now they do that thing that romantic comedies like to do where someone smart offers help to the girl that they like when it's actually just a dirty scheme to get them in bed. So that's... that's fun. You know, despite this character being a horrible pervert, I actually don't mind this actor. I think if he was reeled in a bit and wasn't playing a potential sex offender, I could see him in a role that actually works. He seems to be quite good at improv. Text me! Suck a dick! No! Why did that go on for so long? Why was that last bit necessary? So we're about 20 minutes in and there's basically no story. It's just these random scenes with people either screaming or pooing. It feels like it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not the end and Shane survived, which leads to a strange circle jerk moment where Attitude Girl says Shane Dawson has great hair and is attractive. And she literally says she wants to have coitus with them with him. Like she just says it. Has that ever happened to anyone who isn't Ryan Gosling? Oh my god, you know you're attractive, it's annoying. Wow, amazing hair and I'm attractive? Mm. Yeah, here we go. Would I have sex with you? Yeah, probably. Is it just me or is there a weird kind of ego to having a character in the movie that you directed and starred in say something like that to you? And of course, they have sex because he's so irresistible. Cut to Thanksgiving, where the worst character ever written into any piece of media shows up. Uh, their queen impregnated me, and the baby grew to full size in less than eight hours. And then it ate its way out of my uterus. Oh What's my god, going? why did nobody stop this? Why can't we just have an alcoholic aunt like every other family? Today, you can consider me an alcoholic father. Oh my god, this is what I mean about this film using concepts that are not funny on their own as the punchline. Being an alcoholic is not funny. There are plenty of characters in media who drink a lot and it can work as a joke, especially when it's animated because of the barrier of it being cartoon characters so it just seems less real. But saying that you wish you had an alcoholic family member just sounds horrible when you think about it. It removes any potential for humor, at least for me. I mean, why do I need a dog? to tell me that I'm crazy and a danger to myself and others. I mean, hello? I already have the voices in my head telling me that. <laughs> I can't kill them, they're family. You see what I mean? When you present mental illness like this, it just makes it seem sad, scary, and awful, rather than tee-hee, funny, funny. This is supposed to be a, 
a comedy, yeah? To add insult to injury, we're now shown the sassy girl's Thanksgiving meal. Let's see who else we can insult and offend with this scene. So the blind woman's fiance gets his finger sucked by his wife-to-be's mum. And they make fun of blindness some more. Then they play Dance Central on Xbox Connect, which you can buy now for your Xbox Connect. It's weirdly similar to how Just Dance is used in the Emoji movie. Like it's a setup for something to call back on in the narrative later on. And it's just as lame and terrible as you could possibly imagine. Hey Tor, can you get the dog? Oh my god, shut up, 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 shut up. Calm down. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You are disturbed. Yeah, Gil, you should try my pie. The desperate mum aspect of the story has no payoff and is just weird and creepy. Look, her daughter is right there. What is wrong with you? Shane Dawson runs to Edgy Girl's house where she lays the line down with him. Look, I know you just had to text with me, but we're not girlfriend and boyfriend. But the desperate mum comes outside and flirts with Shane Dawson. Who's this stripping young man? Then they play Dance Central. <laughs> For connect. Scared to lose? No, 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 I just hate dancing. Hmm, you seem to hate a lot of things. Yeah, I do. I hate everything and everyone. It's kind of my thing. Hey, that's my thing, movie. You can't steal my thing, movie. You have to kiss me. I want to play! <laughs> I really dislike when movies try to make sex creeps funny. Like, can you imagine how it would go down if it was the dad who was trying to get with his son's date if the sexes would flip round? It's equally as creepy and inappropriate to me. And most of all, not funny. I just want you to realize how fucked up this is. I just want you to realize how fucked up this is. I just want you to realize how fucked up this is. I just want you to realize how fucked up this is. I just want you to realize how fucked up this is. I just want you to realize how fucked up this is. So now a big chunk of the movie is dedicated to Shane Dawson and Attitude Girl hanging out and being romantic. Weirdly enough, these two actually do have some chemistry. They're quite good at delivering their lines, except the lines are just so ungodly terrible. A lot of these actors are pretty natural on camera and full of charisma, but this film just has very little to say and it's quite shallow and juvenile, as we've already seen. Like, there's actually an okay scene with Shane, an edgy girl, just talking that's kind of fine, but that's absolutely ruined by a security guard storming in and tasering Shane Dawson for basically no reason. Haha, <laughs> that's funny, funny, funny. For the first act, you have no clue who the main character is supposed to be can't decide whose perspective it wants to show the story from, so it just shows it from everyone's perspective. That really keeps things organized, D doing that. So there's the montage of Shane Dawson and Edgy growing together as a couple, and then... Hang on, wait a second. That music. I've heard it somewhere before. Well, good luck with the baby. Well, good luck. Well, First they steal my shtick about hating everything, and now they steal the Kevin MacLeod elevator music that I- I don't even own. That I use for my intro in a film they made in 2014, where it only existed for like a few months. Okay, but you have to admit, this is a really weird coincidence. I think I'm high. <laughs> Listen to that music and tell me that this feels like a real movie. It comes across as being so cheap and so cheesy. Even acknowledge it at one point. As if they're getting too cheesy just in that one moment. The whole film's cheesy, what are you talking about? <sighs> Scott, enough, this is way too Disney Channel. Most of the scenes when they're detached from each other feel like they're just a regular Shane Dawson YouTube sketch that are just crudely shoved together into a feature long movie. I guess some of this film would be fine as a free YouTube video, but it's the fact that it's sold as a product and you have to sit there for such a long time that really gets to me. Every now and again, they update you on what's going on with the pervert. I guess without this B-plot, it wouldn't be long enough to be classed as a feature film, so... Unfortunately, it's mostly just boring nonsense, and she turns him down in the end. Neither of their characters have much of an arc, so I don't really understand the point, because it wasn't funny. It's just filler. Towards the end, it suddenly starts to turn into this sensitive drama, but the ridiculous, over-the-top humor completely bogs it down and makes it feel like it comes out of nowhere in a really bizarre tonal shift. Three words! die a -ria. Am I right? <laughs> Slammed up! Why is every vile, disgusting joke linked with a 
black guy? There are no other black characters in the movies, so it kind of feels like an entire race of people have been turned into a punchline. In fact, the Indian guy was the same, as well as like a Hispanic character that I didn't mention earlier. Like they just exist to be a punchline because of their race. I really, really hope it wasn't intended to come across in the way it did, but it's just kind of offensive for no other reason than to be offensive at the expense of people for something they have absolutely no control over. It was cancer, right? Yeah, she uh, passed away years ago. Suddenly to gain sympathy points for Shane Dawson, his character is revealed to have lost his mother to cancer. Right, so cancer they treat seriously, but mental health and alcoholism is a funny old haha -ha meme, is it? Okay, I see how it is, movie. So because this is a quirky romantic comedy, the main characters have to fall out for no reason so they can make up again and be pals at the end. Mandy, Stacy, and Lacey are totes retar. <laughs> Now this is the first thing in the movie I laughed with instead of laughing at. It's such a disgusting image that's genuinely kind of funny. There's another unpleasant party scene that ends with Shane Dawson being raped by his ex-girlfriend. I'd show it, but for obvious reasons I can't. Attitude happens to see it and gets really upset. That's not what it looked like. Heather basically raped me! See, I'm not even joking. I'm not kidding. This actually happened. Yeah, it's really funny because the sexes are reversed. <laughs> yeah, rape, rape is hilarious. So to prove that Shane isn't a self-absorbed asshole who only cares- Keep barking out. So to prove that Shane isn't a self-absorbed asshole who only cares about his hair, he shaves his head in front of Edgy Girl and uh, that wins her back. I know that hating everything and everyone is kind of your thing, but- Okay, uh, this is getting ridiculous now. I appreciate that this character goes through a change and learns something. That's more than what you normally get from these awful films in Search for the Worst. Shame it's too little too late and surrounded by a lot of pretty hateful jokes. Then they dance. Every good movie ends in a dance. God, that makes me feel really happy, that does. Oh, that warms my heart. Oh, I'm crying a little bit. That is so, so nice. I'm not sure how many times you're supposed to laugh at a comedy minimum for it to be considered a success, but I laughed about two times in the entirety of this film, and that includes an outtake section in the credits of the film, so that hardly counts as actually being content that was even in the movie, so it's kind of one laugh. If you consider the context and intent, it fails on just about every level. The context is that Shane Dawson was able to direct and star in a goofy high school comedy because He's Shane Dawson, and the intent was to make a comedy about relationships in Thanksgiving break. Except the relationships are either non-existent or totally bizarre when held next to the straight-up offensive and nasty comedy. Without the horrible jokes and trimming some of the more boring stuff out, this could probably work just fine as a 30-minute YouTube short. But it's utterly repulsive as a movie and makes me feel sick to think about. Everyone finds different things funny, but you can't really argue the case that this film is well-written as far as competent storytelling and characters goes. The biggest problem is that it simultaneously uses its protagonists as unlikable, annoying, outrageous joke dispensers, and at the same time wants you to relate and sympathise with their struggles and like them as people. It's all these clashing ideas that don't work when shoved together. I had a brief look at Dawson's channel and noticed that he's consistently been making free short films for anyone to watch for a while now. Honestly, it seems like a much more effective use of his talents. Making a movie isn't the be-all, end-all of entertainment. And a lot of the time, this type of fast-paced, in-your-face style of humour works a lot better in a short YouTube video anyway. I think I have to rate this lower than just about every other comedy I've covered for this series simply because of how offensive and tasteless a lot of the humour was. It's a different type of offensive to a movie just being poorly made or boring. As far as the production goes, it was actually quite good compared to other films in this series. Besides the awful green screen car set in that one scene, it was pretty serviceable. The camera work was relatively bland and over-reliant on shot reverse shot with close-ups, but I'm not really expecting David Fincher levels of blocking, so that kind of thing doesn't really matter too much for a film called Not Cool. I guess it all comes down to two words. Shane Dawson's Not Cool is totes retar. Thanks for watching everybody, this one took a long time just because it was really draining to look at Not Cool every day for like a week or longer. I didn't want to throw up every time I looked at it. But I've decided to relaunch my t-shirt and merchandise store. I'll be leaving the old Spreadshirt open if you want those shirts, but all future shirts with new redesigns and discounts and everything new will be on my new store at iichi.ritualnetworkshop.com. 
www.thebeatbox.com. So head over there, take a look, leave me some feedback on what you think. And thanks for being a viewer. I'll see you next time. Bye.